Welcome to The Rock Church and World Outreach Center. We pray that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a message from one of our special guests. Let me put something on the table and let me see if you can swallow it. You know, the Father, your heavenly Father, wants to dine with you. Jesus said he wanted to dine with you. You know, in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. You know you have a standing invitation for fellowship, for for communion, for, for intimacy. A lot of times people don't like to get close to God because their worldview of God is not based on Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus is the perfect picture of the Father. Jesus is the perfect picture to show you visible what the invisible God is like. Jesus is the express image of his person. And, and, and so if you have a worldview of God that's different than Jesus, you're going to have a few little distortions about your worldview. And a lot of people then don't want to come close because a lot of people think God's got something on them. Or that God wants to tell you everything that's, 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 that's wrong with you, for example. And so uh, people don't like to have that kind of fellowship over a meal with somebody who thinks he's going to get them. I remember when I first uh, started in missions, this is 1979. I went into full-time ministry in September 1979, so that's 35 years ago. I worked with another organization five years before Heidi and I started Mutual Faith in 1984. But do you know, I'll never forget the executive director of this organization wanted me to have a meal with him, and I was a nervous wreck because this guy always seemed to be picking me apart. He was the executive director. It seems like I could never do anything right. I was very insecure in who I was as, as in, in missions and in the ministry. And I'll never forget the night before having that meal. I was just wringing my hands, nervous. I thought this guy wants to take me to dinner to be nice to fire me, you know? I just thought he was gonna tell me everything in the world I was doing wrong. See, nobody wants to have fellowship with the Father if, if, if they think the Father just wants to, 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 to get them, so to speak. That's why a lot of people really are at a distance. They don't know how to come close, but Jesus gives an invitation for you to come close. In fact, it goes on to say in John chapter 21, verse 12, Jesus said it this way, come and dine. This is when he's speaking to the disciples after his victory over death, hell and the grave, and he was raised victoriously from the, from the dead. He says, uh, come and, and, and dine. And nobody even dared ask who he was. They, they knew it was the Lord. So I want you to imagine tonight just, just sitting at a table with the Father. And I want you to know what the Father is going to feed you is not what's wrong with you. What the Father wants to feed you is what's right about you. And what he's going to present you is the love of the Lamb. He's going to want you to feed on the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God, Jesus, the Christ who came and, and took the sins of the world. It's absolutely astonishing. And when you're sitting at the Father's table, the Father just doesn't want you to feed on Jesus according to your knowledge of his life. The Father wants you to feed on Jesus according to the revelation of his death. See, if you just understand and know Jesus according to his life, the love of God will never fully grip you. Because Jesus in his life will paint you a picture of how good God is to you. See, if you study Jesus and his miracles and what he does, all that is healthy and helpful because it shows you that God is good to you. But when you feed on Jesus and study Jesus according to his death, according to the cross, then you can understand that you are good to God. See, in one way you can understand God is good to you. In the other way where love is demonstrated. See, the Bible teaches that God's love for you is demonstrated while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's why the new covenant, Paul says, I choose to know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And the beautiful thing about the cross of Jesus Christ, you can understand the equation that gives you a righteous position before the Father. It's all in him. Jesus now is your righteousness. Jesus is your sanctification. Jesus is your redemption. Jesus is your wisdom, the scripture teaches. And so the beautiful thing is when you feed on the love of the lamb, you grow astonished with what great grace and love and compassion 
in mercy and help and hope in sufficiency he has for you. So I want to talk to you a little bit about feeding on the love of the Lamb. But see, you have to be confident enough to come and sit at the table. And to do that, you can't know yourself according to the flesh. You've got to know yourself according to God's view of you in Christ because that's the only view of you that will ever give you confidence. To have confidence that Jesus is your everything. Remember the story. You know, I began when I started teaching this thought because I want to bring you to a missions thought that will absolutely shock your system if it does anything to you like it did for me, and I've been preaching a long time. Look, I'm, I, I'm, an, I'm an older guy. I got a lot of gray hair. Thank God I'm not near as old as your pastor. <laughs> because he is absolutely ancient. But listen, I'm, I'm getting up there. I got a lot. But you know, when the, when the, I, I want to live my life where the love of God can grip me. I want to live my life as a gospel preacher where I can be surprised with the astonishing love of God for the nations. And I want to show you something tonight that if I put it on the table, you can either swallow it or you can pass the plate. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to put it on the table. The beautiful thing is, is when you swallow anything about the love of the Lamb, it's overwhelmingly good news. There's a thrill about the goodness of God toward you. Jesus, you know, when he was raised from the dead, remember the story, he was walking with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. This is found, by the way, friends, in Luke 24. You can read the whole thing. Jesus has just presented his blood to the Father, and he shows himself alive back in the earth, and he joins two of his comrades, and they're seeing him according to his flesh, and yet did not know who he was. So what did Jesus do? He preached his first New Covenant gospel message in the sense that is the message he preached after, his, after the cross and the risenness of himself. And he preached from the law, from, from the books of Moses. It says he preached from the Psalms and he preached from the prophets, but he preached concerning himself. In other words, he would paint pictures of the old system to reveal a new and better way in a new system. He would reveal a covenant that was cut between God and Jesus Christ so there's no weak link like you or me. Hallelujah. And he tried to present it in a way so people could see who he was, the risen Savior. But you know, the Bible says as he preached, their hearts got strangely warmed, but they still couldn't see who he was. Sometimes people can have a, an emotional moment or an emotional feeling, and all that's wonderful, and I celebrate it all because I'm the most emotional guy probably that ever preaches in the sense that I'm always crying. People say, Keith, are you going to come to my church and cry again? I say, I probably will. Hallelujah. Because you probably need some, some, some tenderness of the love of the Father to astonish you, to move you, to be surprised again with the love of God so you can absolutely display the mercy of God in a new way. Amen. Hallelujah. So in Luke 24, it says in verse 31, Jesus is still walking with these guys. He says, now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them. Notice, we're back to a table. We're back to dining. As Jesus sat at the table with them, he took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. Notice now Jesus isn't showing anything about his life. Jesus is showing something about his death. He took the bread, he blessed it and broke it, and he gave it to them. What Jesus is doing is having communion. He's showing them what the cross has done to pre-approve them before the Father. It's the new covenant in my blood, he told them on Passover. And now this is a few days later, and now as they partook, of the revelation of his death. Love gripped their heart and they could see. See, the love of the Father helps you see differently things that you always thought you understood. See, I've been in the ministry now a long time and there's things through the years that I thought I had. I thought I had it just perfectly because I'm such a sharp cookie, you know. And there are times you can think you're the sharpest knife in the drawer, so to speak, and realize miss the heart of the Father in many things. And so I'm just in a place in my life where I'm letting the love of God just so grip me and so shape me and so, so, so uh, re, 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 uh, re, review the view of the Father toward me from his perspective, not from my perspective, that I, can, that I can figure it out. But yet have the view from his perspective in Christ and everything about it changes. When Jesus had them feed 
and his death and his risenness through communion because they knew as often as they drink it, they show forth the Lord's death till he come. And it's in his death you know you have life. It's in his death you know you're redeemed. It's in his death that you know that you're good to God because of, of what Jesus has done. And so the beautiful thing here is Jesus presented himself to them, not according to his life, but according to his death. And like I said, when you know Jesus according to his life, you can know God is good to you. But when you know Jesus according to his death, the cross, you know that you are good to God. And that's what's shocking. How can people believe it? The only way you can believe it is by faith. Faith for your righteous position that Jesus is your everything. Look at it. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. Paul the Apostle is writing believers in Corinth, and they weren't the most spiritual group in, around, you know. They were a bunch of rascals in the flesh. In the flesh. There was envy, there was strife, there was sexual immorality. In fact, the Corinthian church, they'd go to communion, everybody get drunk. Absolutely wasted, blasted. So Paul brought correction to a lot of things. But yet he starts the book by saying they're sanctified. They're redeemed. He begins to show them a worldview from the Father's perspective that's different than their own because it's not knowing yourself according to the flesh. It's knowing yourself according to your redeemed innocence. Look at it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 15. Here's what the scripture says, and Jesus died for all. How many believe Jesus died for all? That means everyone, everywhere has been included in the massive work of the love of the Father in Christ. Jesus died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves. You know, I know that my life is being transformed when I'm not self-serving, when I'm not selfish, when I'm not living for myself. See, if you're a self-serving believer, well, you need a fresh revelation. You need a baptism in the love of the Father in a way that's going to change your worldview about who you are before Him in the way others can receive of His great love and grace too. You should no longer live for yourselves, but you live for Him who died for them and rose again. See, we live for Jesus because of his death and his risenness. Sounds good, right? So the next verse says, verse 16, therefore, because of his death and risenness, from now on, everybody say from now on. Yeah. That means right now, from now on, we regard or we know no one according to the flesh. Let's stop. That's pretty astonishing to me. You know what verse Keith Hershey's trying to live out in this calendar year? This verse. You know, it's absolutely it fights with me. Because I know everybody according to the flesh. That's the only way you're empowered to bring judgment. You know, the first sin, eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, gives people the power for judgment. And I tell you, Jesus changes the equation now because of the death and the risenness of Jesus. From now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now... We know him thus no longer. See, you're not even to know Jesus according to his life. You're to know Jesus according to his death. That's where the love of the Father absolutely astonishes you. And you say, you've got to be kidding me. That I can be right with God Almighty through the work of the one. And this love, when it grips your heart and renews your mind, transforms you. So the things about your flesh that you know of yourself, according to the flesh, they're, trans, uh, they're, they're, they're fixable in, in the sense that you can be transformed as you're beholding the Lamb of God. But we're, we're not even to know Jesus, according to the flesh. You know, I, I always tell couples, even uh, Heidi and I did a, a marriage conference, which I never do. <laughs> we, we're not marriage conference people. But we, we, uh, we were prompted to do this. And Heidi said, what are you going to teach? And I'm gonna, I said, I'm going to teach people how to love their spouse, not according to their flesh, but according to the redeemed innocence. That's the only way you'll ever have a happy marriage. And I'll tell you what, that's the only way your spouse can ever fully please you. Because there's something about your spouse that gets on your nerves. I'm preaching good now. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> If you don't know yourself according to your redeemed innocence, sometimes you lay your head on the pillow and think, dear God, am I even safe? <laughs> How many have had that thought? I see that hand. I see. <laughs> Listen, you have to know yourself according to the cross. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 
This is why it's so absolutely astonishing. We're not to know anybody according to the flesh, but according to the redeemed innocence, and you're not to know Jesus according to the flesh. You don't know him according to the cross. That's the only way you'll ever know that you're good to God. In fact, the next verse says, do we have it? I don't know if I gave it to you, verse 17. Therefore, now you could quote this by heart. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, 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 all things are new. Now you can quote that, but I bet you didn't know the verse before. Therefore, it means it's connected to the previous thought of not knowing anybody according to the flesh. The only way you know, have confidence in your natural man that you're a new creation is to not to know you according to the flesh. You know yourself according to your righteous, redeemed innocence that in God's worldview, Jesus has God's opinion of you. You are secured in him. You are accepted. I'm preaching good to myself now. You're accepted in the beloved. It's awesome. The next verse, verse 17. Do we have verse 17? Therefore, if anyone is in... Oh, verse 18, I'm sorry. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us through Jesus Christ has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That's missions, by the way. See, missions is going in the Inland Empire, going all over the world here. And I was, all I do is tell people to reconcile to God, that Jesus already did the work. They've got to believe it by faith, but the work is done. You're reconciled to God. Look at this, that God was in Christ. What is the ministry of reconciliation? Verse 19. That God is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world, everyone everywhere, to himself, not counting their trespasses against him. How is it that God cannot count trespasses against somebody? He can't know them according to the flesh. Sins in your flesh. He gotta, he's got to see you in Christ according to the cross. But this is God's opinion of you. This is the optic worldview of God for you. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against them. So we say, hey, be reconciled to God. Now people have to know the news. God's got nothing on them. People got to know the news that Jesus Christ took it all. I said, Jesus Christ took it all. Jesus Christ bore the sin of the world. That's why you can't be astonished at people's fleshly failures and sin. That's why when I'm counseling people now and I hear the bizarrest things, I'll go, thank God I have a memory that lasts about 10 minutes when the meeting's over. I don't, I don't remember anything negative about what people tell me. In the bizarre, crazy stuff, sometimes, you know, even Heidi and I would be talking about people we're trying to minister to, and she'll ask me about a question. I had a conversation. I said, Heidi, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know the details anymore. And you know, our wives want the details, and all God's men said, amen. I appreciate that. That, that was encouraging. Did you hear that hearty amen, Heidi? Hallelujah. Men, say that again. Say amen and amen. amen. Oh, my, 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 my. Woo, I'm feeling the blessing. Hallelujah. But here's the deal. God's committed to you the ministry of reconciliation. See, when you teach and preach like this, uh, our religious minds don't always like it. When that's put on the plate that Jesus is your everything, we always say, well, it's Jesus plus another dish. No, it's Jesus plus nothing. And you get the whole load. He is the start and the finish of everything. When, when Jesus began to preach like this, it made the whole church mad. If you want to lose a lot of people that have a religious worldview, you teach something like this. Aren't you glad I'm only here one night? Look at this. <laughs> look, look, look at this. This is kind of cool. John chapter 6. Are you all glad you're here? Yeah. Look at it. John chapter 6, verse 53. Then Jesus said to them, by the way, you ought to read all of John 6. It's a cool chapter. Jesus preaching to a whole crowd. Jesus said to the crowd, most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat, we're talking about dining, coming and dining, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, unless you drink His blood, you got nothing. You're empty. Let's pretend I'm Jesus. I like when I can role play Jesus. Let's pretend you're the crowd. And I say, unless you eat my flesh, unless you drink my blood, you've got nothing in you. And you look at me like, say, the dude's crazy. The dude's talking about cannibalism. 
And you know what? When Jesus preached this way, read all of John 6. John 6, he didn't lose half the crowd. He lost the whole crowd. Because all Jesus was talking about is Jesus plus nothing. Look at the next verse, verse 54. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, we're talking about dining, has eternal life. Pretty simple. All you got to do is sit at the table. Understand the death of Jesus and know Jesus according to the cross and announce the news is good for you. Believe it in your heart, confess it, declare it. Jesus said, you have eternal life. And he said, I'll raise you up on the last day. Think about that. Your risenness on that day is just determined a lot by what you're eating. That's why I'd sit at the Father's table and eat the love of the Lamb and say, you've got to be kidding me. Give me some more. It's the love of God in Christ that's my only security. It's my only security for righteousness, for sanctification, for holiness, for redemption. It's all Jesus. And it's the only way Keith Hershey can change. And Keith Hershey, as long as he's been in this body, is still, if you knew him according to the flesh, is still screwed up. I still get angry. I still get frustrated. I'm not perfect yet. Heidi says I'm only perfect 98.7% of the time, and I'm looking to be perfect 100%. No, she doesn't say that. But what I'm trying to say is we're all human. You have to know Jesus according to the cross. And see, God's view of you in Christ and celebrate it and take your place in it and announce the news of it. Look at the next verse goes on to say, verse 55, my, fled, my flesh is food indeed, my blood is drink indeed. Verse 56, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me. Think of that. How do you abide in Jesus? That's a good way. Just sit at the table. Just eat. Just eat, drink, get absolutely loaded with the love of the Father where you're astonished because it makes no sense. The width and breadth and length and height and depth, to know the love of Christ passes knowledge. Your peon brain will never get it in this life. Your peon brain, my peon brain, will never get it in this age. The Bible says in the ages to come, God's going to make known to us the manifold riches of his grace. I tell you, the love of God in Christ is far, far, far greater than any of us could ever fully understand. Let me show you something about missions real quick. Are you all still glad you're here? Yeah. Let, me, let me preach just for like five more minutes, then I'm, then I'm done. Look at this. Go with me to Acts chapter 10. Now, this relates to all this vision you have here about going into all the world. You know, if it's true what we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that God was in Christ reconciling the world... That means everyone everywhere, as I like to say it. I always tell people, God loves you completely, whether you like it or not. God's got nothing on you. Because he doesn't see you according to your flesh right now. He sees you according to your redeemed, innocent. Listen, Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to convict the world of sin. Then he explains what the sin is. Not believing on Jesus. Not believing on the lamb that's covered the sin. Jesus explained it. Look at this. This is amazing to me in Acts 10 because Acts 10, some scholars say is two years after Acts 2. Some scholars say as many as 10 years after Acts 2. Remember Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost? Who was there and preached the word? Peter. Who was Peter? He was a rascal. He was the best cusser in Jesus' ministry. Jesus' ministry was full of losers and thieves and people who would steal the offering, and Jesus never fired one of them. Amen. You know why? Because Jesus didn't know them according to the flesh. Amen. I'm preaching better than... than, than I'm, I'm preaching to myself now. You know why? Because I get ticked off. I get ticked off because I've been so used and abused in ministry. The love of God's helping me. The love of God's helping me. Jesus loved them according to the redeemed innocence. He loved them according to the cross. I'd have fired every last one of those rascals Amen. and sued their butts off. <laughs> Jesus did. So who stood on the day of Pentecost? It was the cusser. 
God can use cussers and God's people said amen, hallelujah. God, God can use people who, who've done wrong and who failed. God uses frail people because he sees you according to your redeemed innocence. So in Acts 10, you know, Peter was pretty rigid with his theology. He thought he knew it all. But yet, two years or ten years later after Acts 2, God showed him, you better sit at the table. And he wouldn't do it while he was conscious. So God said, okay, if you can't get it while you're conscious, I'll get it to you while you're unconscious. I'll sedate you. And the father put him down for the count. You know, the story went up to, to pray. Bam, he fell into a trance. Unconscious. What did the father give him? A meal. A picnic. Come and dine. What did the father serve? The love of the lamb. It's a mission message. What did Peter do when the plate was passed of all these wild things that according to his law he couldn't eat? He passed the plate. He couldn't see it. He couldn't see God in it. He said, it's impossible. So God said, okay, if you can't get it on the first helping, I'll uh, circle the plate. You know, if you don't get it on the Father's love, just keep passing the plate. As long as you're in your earth suit, the Father will visit you with his love in astonishing ways until finally you sit still and swallow it and trust him completely. So he passed the plate again. Peter said, not so, Lord. I've never eaten anything common or unclean. I said, okay, Peter, just stay down. I'll deal with you while you're unconscious. I'll keep you here, bro. <laughs> the plate came three times, right? Let's read it real quick. Acts 10, verse 9. It says, the next day they went on the journey and drew near to the city. Peter went up to the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Verse 10. Became very hungry, wanted to eat. While they made ready, he fell into a trench from conscious to unconscious. Verse 11. He saw heaven open, an object like a great sheep bound at four corners descending to him, led down to the I call it, I call it a heavenly picnic. Okay? Verse uh, 12, in it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, birds of the air. Verse 13, and a voice came to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. This is the voice of the Father. This is the heart of God viewing people through the finished work of the Lamb. God says, enjoy it. Partake. What did Peter say in verse 14? Not so, Lord, for I've never eaten anything common or unclean. Why did Peter think that was unclean and common? Because he only knew it according to a fleshly worldview. He didn't know it according to the redeemed innocence of the finished work of Jesus. So what, what did the Father say to him in verse 15? And a voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleaned, don't you dare call dirty. Don't you dare call dirty. Now, some people don't understand how I can be in the Middle East and announce people's cleanliness because I'm not doing it according to the worldview of their flesh because according to the flesh, they're all a bunch of rotten sinners like the rest of us. And we sang tonight, grace saved a wretch like you and me. But I choose not to see anybody according to their flesh. I, see, I choose to see them according to the cross. So what do I do? I announce what the ministry of reconciliation is all about. That is, God was in Christ fixing you fully. And if you can have the courage and confidence to say yes to the love of the Lamb, everything about your life changes in an instant. You become a new creation. And then as you behold the Lamb and walk in fellowship and grow in the Word and life in the Spirit, you're transformed into the very image of who He is. But the beautiful thing is getting the news to the hearts of the people so they can be in. You know what happened when Peter got a bite of the goodies on that third time around? He thought about it. He says, man, this is a different worldview. Then there was a knock on the door. Who was it? Not a Jew like Peter. It was a Gentile. So the Gentiles came into the revelation of the love of the Lamb because somebody had a meal. And somebody would bathe on the love of God and astonish him. And he went to Cornelius' house and he said, you know, in my religion, it was unlawful for me even to have company with you. What a rigid regulation we put sometimes towards people to make them qualify for our fellowship, to qualify for our friendship, or qualify for the news that they're righteous not based on their flesh, but righteous based on the cross. I'm all out of time. Did you like the word tonight? Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah.
Put your hands on your heart. Father, these are your precious ones. Let us come and dine. Let us feed on the love of God in Christ and say, you've got to be kidding me. Father, if that's your worldview, if that is true, Father, what God has cleansed, don't call common, don't call dirty. Father, the only way, the only way this gospel preacher can do it is not to see people according to their flesh. Because, Lord, our flesh is frail. Sin is in our flesh. But help us to see one another according to the cross. Friend, if you've never yielded your heart to the love of God, to, if you've never been born again, like we read in the verse, a new creation in Christ, tonight, just a simple acceptance of his love for you. I'd like to pray a simple prayer with you. This guarantees heaven forever. Gives you victory over death, hell, and the grave. Gives you victory over the devil. Jesus Christ did it all. And the Bible says if you can just believe in your heart that Jesus went to the cross, he went to the grave, he was raised from the dead, and announced that news, the scripture says you're saved. Nothing else secures you like Jesus Christ. He is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. If you're not trusting in Jesus, you're trusting in yourself. And self-sufficiency will shipwreck you every time. There's no guarantee of life. There's no guarantee of heaven. There's no guarantee of anything in and of yourself. Don't know yourself according to the flesh. Know yourself according to the cross. If you'd like a prayer tonight to give your life to Jesus, I just want you to raise your hand real high. You say, Keith, my heart's been stirred tonight with the love of God. I want to pray a simple prayer with you, Keith, and give my life to Jesus and be born again. On the count of three, if you would like to say a simple prayer with me to give your life to Jesus, would you just raise your hand? One, two, three. Would you do that? Here's a hand. Here's a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Who, who else? All over this auditorium. Anybody else? Very quickly. Very quickly. Thank you back here. Thank you. Thank you back here. Listen, those of you with your hand raised, because I can't see you, I want to shake your hand real quick. Just, just step out in the aisle real quick and come down here. Can you do that? Those of you who want a simple prayer, that's right, my brother. Come on, there's a brother back here. I think there's a sister back here, brother. Come on down real quick. Let's, let's uh, encourage these precious ones. Can we do that? Let's thank God for them. Come on down. Come on down. Come on. Who else? I know there's a couple more people. God loves you, my brother. Just stay here with me. I'm going to pray with you. How are you? You're blessed. 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 Come on. That's right, come on. How are you? How are you? Bless you all. Bless you. Bless you. Hey, my dear, you're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're beautiful. Hey, my brother, you're blessed. You're loved completely. Hallelujah. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Here's another precious one. Here's another precious one. Bless you, my dear. God loves you. Hallelujah. Just put your hands over your heart. Say this prayer. Everybody say this together. Say, Jesus, Jesus this, is this is amazing grace. I was lost, I was lost but, now but now I'm found. The love of God, the love of God in, Christ in Christ rescued me. Rescued me. I, feed I feed on Jesus. I swallow the whole truth, the whole truth. And, nothing and nothing but the truth of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. He is my Savior. He is my Redeemer, He is my Righteousness, He is my Sanctification, and I am complete in Him. I give my life to You. Thank You, Jesus. I'm saved. I'm born again. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hey, friends, we want to help you right here, one of the pastors. Just go with him real quick. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. Can you do that? Hallelujah. Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow. You repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent Him for me and that He died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that His blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus 
And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin, and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth that I am born again. I'm a child of God, that I'm saved, and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. If this message spoke to you, please share it with us. We'd love to hear from you. You can find more information at www.rockchurch.com.